Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Hurricane Milton still in the Gulf of Mexico, but we now have a tropical storm watch for our coastal waters and our southern beaches. I'll explain what that means coming up. Also, Florida state officials are bracing for the largest evacuation since Hurricane Irma in 2017. Millions of people are heading north as Hurricane Milton barrels toward that state. We'll have a look at efforts to keep people out of harm's way. Plus, a person is dead after being struck by a car on a road in Raleigh. Michelle McConaughey is gathering information about the investigation in the WRA Live Center. A lot of information new this noon. There's a tropical storm watch for the coastal waters of southern North Carolina here in our state. People are fleeing Florida in droves ahead of Hurricane Milton's impact. There are people in nine counties in Florida that have been ordered to leave ahead of the strongest Gulf storm since 2005. Good afternoon to you. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Thanks for joining us. Evacuees are facing traffic jams and gas stations are running out of fuel as millions of people head north toward safety. And Milton will bring potentially catastrophic damage to parts of Florida. And meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is on the WRL weather patio with the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. Elizabeth. Yeah, this is new, so I wanted to get to this first. This is a tropical storm watch for our coastal waters. It does not mean that if you're you know, inland um, in the New Hanover County area or Brunswick County or Pender County that you're going to see tropical storm conditions. This is only going to be if you were going to be out on the water. Those coastal waters Thursday, we can see gusts 25 to 50 miles per hour and Friday gusts to 25 miles per hour. Again, that is just going to be out in the coastal waters. But I wanted to bring that to your attention because it's new. Um, here at noon. Our rip current risk is already high for most of the coast, just the southern beaches uh, to the south and west of Wilmington. The storm continues uh, just to look so dangerous. This is a look at the satellite image and over the last couple of hours, it's really formed a uh, more solid eye. However, um, it weakened a little bit earlier this morning in the uh, in the eight o'clock advisory down to 45 mile, uh, excuse me, down to 145 mile per hour winds. It bounced back to 150. It's still a category four storm moving northeast at about nine miles per hour as of the new information from 11 o'clock. Here's a look at the forecast path. It is likely to stay category four all the way through its travels across the Gulf of Mexico. It will be a very powerful storm and just before it makes landfall, the winds may uh, slacken just a little bit, but this is going to feel like a cat four. It's going to pick up a lot of water on its travels across the Gulf and dump that right there on the coast of Florida with a huge storm surge. Could be a record storm surge for parts of Florida. It's cat two coming across central Florida and then back out into the Atlantic with minimal impacts for North Carolina, even though we do have that tropical storm watch. Hurricane warnings for so much of Florida, a good chunk of it. And of course, we have a Tampa Bay storm surge could be as much as 10 to 15 feet, and that extends fairly far south in Florida as well. So we'll continue to talk more about what Florida will see and what we'll see in North Carolina. And of course, our change in the weather coming up. And happening right now in the WREL Live Center, obviously this is a very dangerous storm approaching Florida and the Florida Department of Transportation says that there is still time to safely evacuate and you should, especially if you're in those mandatory evacuation areas. This is a live look right now on I-75 North down in Florida. You can see the huge line of traffic, people just trying to get out of Florida, which is some good news. They are listening and they are getting out of the state. Also, I want to show you this is this is from the Bradenton Police department showing preps uh, before Hurricane Milton arrives. Bradenton is right in between Tampa and Sarasota. Uh, they do say that traffic on major corridors I-75 and I-4 continues to be steady. Uh, tolls in western and central Florida have been suspended. Officials are warning residents do not bank on this storm weakening. In those mandatory evacuation areas, residents will die if they do not listen and leave. And we take you to video of northbound lanes of I-95 leading straight out of Florida. It pretty much tells the story. The road is packed with Floridians evacuating ahead of Hurricane Milton. WRL's Gilbert Bays is live at a rest stop in Cumberland County where he talked with people from Florida fleeing that storm. Gilbert. 
Yeah, Jeff, you know, the, these stories that we're hearing are pretty amazing and they're heartfelt and the storm hasn't even arrived, but that is the point of an evacuation ahead of the storm. We're at this rest stop right here. This is um, just before you get to exit 49. That's where a lot of uh, motels and hotels here in Cumberland County, uh, just off Interstate 95. You can see the cars behind me here. Just about every one of these cars back here has a license plate from Florida. Now, photojournalist Mike Joyner uh, traveled along uh, Interstate 95 here in Cumberland County, and he found that the northbound traffic was relatively light, and that's because many of the people with whom we spoke said they left uh, Florida on Sunday to avoid the massive amount of traffic that we're seeing right now. We met entire families with little ones, pets, and supplies headed north, and we bumped into one man who showed us on his cell phone that the path of Hurricane Milton was coming right through his home. I've lived through him in Texas uh, on the, its Gulf Coast, but uh, this one uh, looks to be probably I don't know, my guess is probably one of the most dangerous ones uh, the U.S. has seen. Three million people live in that area. So the exodus continues with millions of people headed north to stay with relatives or in hotels and motels until Hurricane Milton makes its way through Florida. And many of the folks we talked with today said they were paying close attention to Hurricane Helene in the mountains of North Carolina. They say that that gave them extra incentive to get out ahead of, ahead of Hurricane Milton. Reporting live here in Cumberland County, Gilbert Bays, WREL News. Glad to see those folks made it to safety. With the threat of back-to-back -back hurricanes looming in parts of Florida, crews are scrambling to haul away Hurricane Helene's debris before Milton makes landfall. NBC's Jesse Kirsch is in Sarasota, where some owners fear debris could become flying projectiles. Less than two weeks ago, you could see Hurricane Helene brought the water level on this home to around my waist height. But with this new storm, Milton, we're potentially going to see twice as high of a storm surge. And that is something that is concerning on top of all of this debris from the last storm that is still out in communities all over Florida's Gulf Coast. And what we're looking at is the possibility that this debris could be picked up in the air by those powerful wind gusts. It also could become essentially a battering ram in storm surge, which again could be twice as high in areas like where I am in Sarasota. So all of that debris pickup that we're seeing is going on 24-7, the governor says. Uh, the state's saying that hundreds of truckloads have already been picked up, and this is something that is continuing. But even with the pickups, you can see there's still a good amount of debris out in these communities. Another challenge on top of everything that we typically see ahead of a major hurricane, which is going on right now. Calls for evacuations, people stocking up on items like food, sandbag distribution, people boarding up homes and businesses, all of this as this area is bracing for another major hurricane, the second in less than two weeks. Back to you. Today's the last day for a community supply drive that will wrap up and head to help the people in the mountains. The Wake County Sheriff's Office has been collecting items all week. Truckloads of supplies will leave today. You can drop off non-perishable food items, cleaning supplies, hygiene products, and anything else you can think of at the state fairgrounds in Raleigh now until 4.30 this afternoon. North Carolina natives Eric Church and Luke Combs will headline a benefit concert for Hurricane Helene victims. It's called Concert for Carolina. It'll be held at Bank of America Stadium on October 26th. Combs said he reached out to church right away to get things organized, and they want to put on as big of a concert as possible to raise as much money as possible. The Teppers were kind enough to donate the stadium to us. My production company, SES, has donated all the production. I mean, there really is almost zero overhead cost uh, for this concert, which, you know, means that we have, you know, is that an extra million dollars probably just to go to the efforts. And tickets go on sale for that concert Thursday morning at 10 a.m. And back here in the WRL Live Center, one person is dead after a crash on South Saunders Street in Raleigh. This street was closed right here at Pecan Road. It just reopened about four or five minutes ago. You can see traffic uh, moving on South Saunders Street again. But this is what the scene looked like. You can, see, you can see a lot of police and EMT on scene. Again, South Saunders Street was closed, uh, just reopened about five minutes ago. But according to officers on the scene, a driver hit a pedestrian. Uh, we are working to learn more details about this. But again, South Saunders Street did just reopen about five minutes ago. 
A person is dead after being hit by a car in Durham. The crash happened on 15501 near Hillsborough Road just before 9 last night. Police say 73-year-old Lester Battle stepped over a guardrail and onto the highway. The driver of a Honda Civic hit him. The driver stopped and called 911, but Battle died at the scene. The driver is not expected to face any charges. You're looking at video of a hazmat situation in Sampson County, courtesy of Sky 5. Crews responded to an overturned tanker truck carrying about 1,800 gallons of diesel. This happened around 9 o'clock this morning near Maxwell Road in Autryville. We're waiting to learn if anyone was injured and when the road will reopen. North Carolina is joining 11 other states suing TikTok and its parent company, ByteDance. The attorneys general alleged TikTok designed its app to be addictive while misrepresenting its mental, emotional and physical risks to young users. Attorney General Josh Stein is asking the court to order TikTok to stop violating the law and to pay penalties. Mark Robinson has a series of town hall events scheduled today in the race for governor. This morning, he met with supporters in Sampson County. This afternoon, he's expected to address voters in Pender and Columbus counties. Robinson will wrap up the day at Max Speed Shop in Fayetteville at 6 o'clock. Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance will be in North Carolina this week. He'll be in Greensboro on Thursday. The event is at the Corey Convention Center at 6 p.m. Vance was in Charlotte and Raleigh last month. Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Walls is campaigning in California over the next few days. Get ready for some homegrown happiness. Today, we are getting a look at some of the mouthwatering foods from dozens of vendors at the 2024 North Carolina State Fair. This year's new dishes represent cuisines from around the world and reimagining some classics as well. For your sweet tooth, there's the Brazilian bowl, birth cake dough, birthday cake dough on a stick, and candied Oreo cakesters, thick cake pops. If you are looking for something savory, be sure to stop by the Oak City Fish and Chips or try the battered bologna fries, maybe the big bacon wrapped in cheese on a stick. You can find ticket info, new foods, rides, and parking info on our State Fair Guide. Just search fair on WRL.com. Next at noon, testing at home for both COVID and the flu. The new over-the-counter tests just approved by the FDA in time for the height of the season. Also from tropical storm to a Category 5 hurricane in 24 hours. Next, we explain what climate change has to do with the rapid intensification of Milton. Plus, a local woman who took this video shares the story of how she was rescued from a bachelorette party in Asheville. That story at 1230. Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257. Give this live sunny blue sky look a little bit of clouds up there over Wilson right there and a little bit of breeze as well. You see the whirly gigs moving right there as you watch WRL news available on Spectrum and the WRL app on your TV or streaming device. The FDA has approved the first at home test to detect both flu and COVID. The Healgen rapid check COVID and flu antigen nasal swab it takes about 15 minutes to test for both. Other over-the-counter combo tests are currently available under emergency use authorization. The FDA says that full approval of this new test is especially important as the country enters the annual flu season. Hurricane Milton grew from a tropical storm to a Category 5 hurricane in less than 24 hours. Experts classify the growth as rapid intensification, which is a new term that explains the 92-mile-per-hour increase in wind speed in such a short time. NBC's climate reporter Chase Kane breaks down the effect of climate change on Hurricane Milton. What we saw with Hurricane Milton on Monday, that extreme rapid intensification is one of the hallmarks of climate change. And that's why people even here in Orlando, more than 100 miles inland, are taking this threat seriously. They are filling up sandbags. Orange County says they've given out more than 100,000 sandbags so far. And that's because just a couple of years ago, when Hurricane Ian hit this area, it brought 13, 15 inches of rain, triggering flash flooding across Orange County. Hundreds of people had to be evacuated from their homes. And of course, people are taking this seriously 
seriously because when you look at what climate change allowed, amplified Milton to do, regular rapid intensification is 35 miles an hour in less than 24 hours. Extreme rapid intensification, this is a new term, that is 58 miles an hour in, of increase in less than 24 hours. And look at what Milton did, 92 mile an hour increase in wind speeds in less than 24 hours. And that has officials here in Orlando concerned if their city stormwater systems can keep up. The problem is that these storms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Our storm system can handle up to a foot of water or three inches in an hour. The problem is these storms are getting more and more and more intense. We never had storms where we had, we had six inches of rain in less than an hour in a regular afternoon storm, which caused some localized flooding a couple of weeks ago. This is gonna be a lot worse than that. So that's going to be the thing to watch here in Central Florida is how much rain Milton brings and also how strong it is when it makes landfall on the west coast of Florida because Orange County officials are saying the National Hurricane Center told them to expect a minimum of Category 1 strength hurricane here in Orlando could potentially be even stronger. So that's why everyone here is taking this threat seriously. In Orlando, a national climate reporter, Chase Kane. Yeah, it ramped up almost double the speed from what they classify as extreme intensification. That's a brand new classification. It's off the charts. Right. And a lot of people like to focus on, oh, is it category four or five, three, whatever it will hit. The thing is, the size of this will mean impacts for the entire state of Florida. And meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is tracking that now. I mean, just look at the size of the thing and how well defined the eye is right now. Yeah, it, it's huge and it's going to be cat four until about the time it makes landfall. So, you know, everybody just needs to be prepared for a cat four. And, you know, we've seen so many people leaving and there's so many counties that uh, are being evacuated right now. And uh, that is that is definitely what needs to be happening. You can see a well-defined eye on it right now. It is still having some impacts there in the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula, about to move through Cancun and Cozumel. But uh, they won't see as strong an impact as we saw there in the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula. It is 520 miles southwest of Tampa right now. Winds at 150. It's been up and down a little bit in the last 12 hours or so, uh, but that is still a very powerful Category 4 storm. 157 makes it Category 5, so it's going to be close to that as it continues its travels across the Gulf of Mexico, likely to be Cat 4. A Cat 4 storm um, has a lot of suction to it. Everything is spinning and lifting upwards in a storm like this, and so it sucks the ocean of uh, up a little bit and then it dumps it out on the land. And so even though it may, uh, the winds may slow down just a little bit before it makes landfall, um, it's still gonna have just a huge impact in terms, in terms of the storm surge. And the storm surge, of course, is the water that just moves on shore. And when we talk about 15 feet of storm surge, that means the storm surge, that means the water is 15 feet high. Um, the reporter there, the climate reporter was talking about um, it being a cat one as it moves across Orlando. The current forecast is for it to be cat two moving across Orlando. Orlando and Central Florida. That's new as well. And then it continues to move out into the Atlantic. Again, we're still looking at minimal impacts in North Carolina, but we'll talk about what those are coming up. Um, just the, the biggest disaster that we're going to see is there along the central uh, to southern coast of Florida, the west coast there. 10 to 15 feet of storm surge possible from Tampa southward. And then, of course, on either side of that, 5 to 10 feet of storm surge, you know, just in an area that's already been pummeled. And so coming up in a little while, we'll talk a little more about, um, you know, the storm surge and, and all the impacts that are going to be down there in Florida. Um, here, um, we almost feel guilty enjoying such an absolutely gorgeous day. It's beautiful. This is a live look at downtown Raleigh right now from the Jimmy V camera. Our temperature is 68 right now. The dew point is 48. It's been a long time since I've been able to stand here in the sun on the patio and feel comfortable. But I'll tell you what, it feels great out. A little bit breezy this afternoon. We're seeing some gusts in Clinton up to 16. We may see some gusts 10 to 15 this afternoon. We're seeing steady winds. Uh, coming out of the uh, northwest at about uh, 5 to 10 right now. Temperature 75 in Raleigh, 74 in Durham, and 80 in Fayetteville. That's where we're headed for our afternoon highs. It's going to be a cool night tonight. We're going to drop it down to 43 in Roxborough and 51 in Fayetteville. So just be, uh, be prepared to grab a jacket heading out the door. Friday will be even cooler at 47, 48 on Saturday morning. That 47 Friday morning will be the coolest overnight low in 167 days. We're not likely to see any rain from Milton in any part of the state of 
North Carolina. But in the coastal waters, this doesn't not mean onshore, but on the coastal waters, there's a tropical storm watch where we could see some winds gusting 25 to 50 miles per hour. That's just a warning that you shouldn't be out in your boat. Rip current danger also high. You shouldn't be out swimming either as the storm moves to our south. So at the coast, some beach erosion, rip currents, strong winds. Here we'll see some gusts uh, 10 to 20 miles per hour and western North Carolina will be breezy, but it will stay dry. Check in uh, our forecast here. It just looks beautiful all the way through the next seven days. The warmest day, uh, 83 on Sunday. Elizabeth, thanks. The devastation we are seeing in western North Carolina from Helene is historic. This afternoon at four, we're looking into how climate change is a driving force behind more severe storms. Then at six, Duke Energy is preparing for Hurricane Milton to make landfall in Florida. The additional resources they're sending. Also, an update on the work underway to restore power in our state. judge ordered Google to give Android users more options to download apps. The ruling essentially gives third-party companies to access the Play Store catalog of apps in order to build rival options. The tech company has until November to make these changes, but Google says that it will take at least 12 to 16 months to create safeguards to prevent potentially malicious software from infecting millions of user devices. A federal judge has cleared the way for an antitrust case to continue against Amazon, although the FTC's case can proceed, a few of the claims were thrown out. The agency and attorneys general from 18 states say Amazon uses its power in the industry to inflate prices and overcharge sellers to limit competition from other companies. This is one of the most significant legal challenges brought against Amazon in its nearly 30-year history. Sam's Club is testing a location with no checkout lanes. A Dallas area location will allow customers to use a smartphone app to ring up purchases as they shop. Workers will have about four times more space to prepare e-commerce orders for pickup or home delivery. The Walmart-owned retailer says the location is its first all-digital store and could be a preview of the future for Sam's. An art exhibit in the Netherlands that looks like two empty beer cans sitting on the ground was actually dumped in the trash accidentally. Now, from a distance, the exhibit entitled All the Good Times We Spent Together just looks like ordinary beer cans. But a little closer look, you realize the cans are hand-painted aluminum pieces that took a lot of time and energy and detail to create. The curator found them just moments before the trash was about to be dumped, and she says displaying artwork in unexpected places keeps visitors on their toes. Bracing for Hurricane Milton, people are boarding up homes and businesses and propping up sandbags to prevent flooding. Elizabeth returns after the break with the timing for Milton's landfall. It's the second most common cancer in women. We're talking about breast cancer. Coming up, how a breast cancer risk assessment could help doctors catch the disease in its early phase. And here's a look at your winning NC Education Lottery numbers on your screen right now. We'll be right back. Looking at video of flooding in the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula, brought on by Hurricane Milton early this morning. The area is home to more than a million people and several Mayan ruins popular with tourists. Milton is now taking aim as a major hurricane along Florida's Gulf Coast. WRL meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is tracking the hurricane and has the latest on its path. Elizabeth. Check in with us again, and you can see, again, that storm still sitting right there on the northern end of the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, the, the coldest clouds, or the strongest part of the storm, is beginning to pull a little bit farther away. You can see Cancun and Cozumel there. It is going to pass north of uh, those uh, uh, cities, those islands. Those are areas that I think a lot of people have heard of before, and there is likely to be some damage there as well. We'll move it on ahead and talk about uh, what's happening as it moves closer to Florida. It's 520 miles southwest of Tampa right now, moving east 
northeast at 9 miles per hour with 150 mile per hour winds, and that makes it a strong Category 4 storm. It will continue to uh, gain some strength as it moves across the uh, Gulf of Mexico because the uh, ocean temperatures are warm, and it is going to continue to gradually weaken. Once it gets closer to land, it may run into some wind shear, which may uh, tear the top of the storm off and weaken it slightly, but it's still going to behave like a Cat 4 storm, dumping a lot of rain uh, and a lot of storm surge on the west coast of Florida. It likely will still have Category 2 winds as it moves across central Florida and then on out into the Atlantic. Uh, very little impact here for us in North Carolina. Uh, we're going to talk about what that will be coming up for us in just a little while. But let's uh, jump on down here. Uh, I think the biggest part of the storm, the most dangerous part, is going to be the storm surge. As much as 10 to 15 feet of storm surge, uh, that could be a record for the Tampa Bay area and the, uh, the locations that are just south of that. Um, so they are evacuating that area just as quickly as they can. And you can see the purple there. Um, and that is where we're looking at an extreme flood risk. And that is for a good chunk of central Florida. So uh, lots of heavy rain, five to 10 inches of rainfall. And uh, we heard from uh, one of the, uh, the officials there in Orlando just a little while ago saying, uh, we don't know if our storm system, our storm sewers and all that uh, can handle it. Why is it so strong so quickly? Above normal sea surface temperatures, that's the fuel for these storms. And there's virtually no wind shear to tear it apart. Coming up again, we will talk a little bit more about what to expect here in North Carolina. And happening right now in the WREL Life Center in the wake of Hurricane Milton, President Biden says he will cancel his trip to Germany and Angola to stay at the White House and monitor the storm. He was supposed to depart for Berlin on Thursday and return back to the U.S. on October 15th. He has since canceled that trip. No word on when he will reschedule, but he spoke to reporters after receiving a briefing on Milton and warned this could be the worst storm to hit Florida in over a century. WRAL has brought you a lot of video from our Helene coverage. We wanted to take you back to one particular piece of video. Here you see what looks like a river coming right out of someone's front porch in Asheville. New today, WRAL's Chris Levinga just talked with the person who recorded that video. And Chris, again, flooding looked like a river there. It does, Jeff. And no, it's not supposed to be there, right? We also saw that flooding that was brought by Helene. Now, this by no means was Kelly White expecting, right? Waterfront property when renting an Airbnb for a mountain weekend. I mean, yes, there was a creek nearby, but that flooding, I mean, it was just overwhelming. She and her girlfriends were having a bachelorette party for her friend, and Kelly planned everything, except she didn't plan for historic flooding overtaking the mountains. She says she recorded this video so others could see what she witnessed. I posted that on TikTok Friday morning, and then I lost service. My family, that's the last that they saw was the video, and they thought that I had floated down the river at that point um, because I had no way to contact them. Now, she's laughing there a little bit because, you know, she's thinking, what is her parents thinking about right now when she has this video? They see what's going on and then they don't hear from her for a while. But Callie says that her boyfriend drove to Asheville from Wendell, where she lives, in a trip that took him about 12 hours. He brought chainsaws and gallons of gas to get the bride and bridesmaids home. They're now safe, but they're feeling for all the people who live in the mountains trying to recover right now. Chris, thanks. Two of country music's biggest stars and who are from North Carolina, Luke Combs and Eric Church, they are raising money for Hurricane Helene victims. The two will headline a benefit concert called Concert for Carolina on October 26th. Combs says almost all of the overhead costs are being donated, which means they'll be able to raise even more money for Helene survivors. Church says he spends half his year in the Banner Elk community, and he's written several... An estimated 42,000 women will die this year from breast cancer. Experts say, though, there is a way to guide women toward the best time to start screening for this disease. It's called a breast cancer risk assessment. Mandy Gaither explains how a patient's risk is calculated and when to get an assessment done. When it comes to breast cancer detection and prevention, one size does not fit all individualized care should be involved when it comes to breast screening and breast care. Uh, and that means that everybody's going to have a different screening protocol based on their personal and family history. 
Breast surgeon Dr. Erica Peters with Cleveland Clinic says that's why breast cancer assessments are done to measure an individual patient's risk of developing the disease. There are many tools that can help, including surveys online or done in a doctor's office. The questions calculate risk based on things like age, family history of breast cancer, or other cancers that might indicate cancer-causing genetic mutations, personal medical history, age of first live birth, race and ethnicity, breast density, and hormone exposure. The patient score will determine when to start breast cancer screening. Most average women should start annual mammograms at age 40. Some women should start screening sooner based, again, on that personal and their family history. Peter says all women should get a breast cancer risk assessment at age 25, especially when there's a family history of breast cancer. For those who don't know that history, genetic testing can help. We rely on our genetic counselors who can do a pedigree to the degree that we know about family history uh, and then do testing to see if you do carry a genetic mutation that increases one risk of breast or other cancers. And that was Mandy Gaither reporting. Dr. Peter says that most breast cancers are not caused by genetics. So she says in addition to knowing your risk, it's important to minimize it as well. And that includes eating a healthy diet, staying active, and limiting or avoiding alcohol. Prime Day, Day deals are here with the discounts come an increase in scams. 500 Sides Keely Arthur walks shoppers through a few tried and true ways to avoid falling victim. A shot at becoming a millionaire will soon cost a bit more. Later, the Mega Millions overhaul that lottery officials say could give players better odds for winning. Amazon Prime Day kicks off today, and while shoppers hunt for deals, scammers are out there on the hunt to steal your money. Five on your side's Keely Arthur is here to help us all avoid that, Keely. Jeff, you really have to be more on guard than before because we're seeing more attackers using AI to craft emails and build websites, making them look far more professional. Grammar errors and typos are really becoming a thing of the past. Here are some scams to watch out for. So phishing, email scams, text scammers may send fake Amazon emails or texts with deals or account issues. Avoid clicking links. Go directly to Amazon.com. Also, third-party sellers. While Amazon has many third-party seller scammers are also present. Always check with seller ratings and reviews and be cautious if a seller has few or none. Fake Amazon websites is next. Scammers create fake websites to steal your info. Always check the URL for that HTTPS, S stands for secure, and a padlock symbol to confirm it's the official Amazon site before buying. Remember, once you give that information up to a scammer, it can be used over and over again. In many cases, the way these attacks are mounted have so much sophistication. From the time that somebody seals your information, they can exploit that information within seconds, and they have tools to automate that process. Now, while you're shopping today and tomorrow, take your time. Remember, once scammers get that information or that money, it's really difficult to recover. I can't tell you how many viewer emails we get from people being scammed. And while we try to help, it's so hard to recover that money. Vigilance, being proactive ahead of time is really the key here. Now, Keely, also because I'm, I'm always looking for those typos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those little things that you could kind of pick up on before are really a thing of the past. Kelly, thank you. And speaking of difficult to recover, Floridians trying to recover from Helene, and now they are facing another threat, Hurricane Milton. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner tracking that for us. And storm surge, the real big concern with this monster storm. Yeah, this could be historic storm surge for the west coast of Florida, the worst that they've seen in uh, 100 years or since you know they've been keeping track of it. We take a look at the tropical satellite again. You can see there's a well-defined eye on the storm, and that just shows the power of it. Um, the the, uh, the coverage of the darkest part of the clouds there is starting to shrink a little bit. Um, it has lost some of its energy. Of course, uh, this time yesterday, it was on its way up to 160 and then eventually uh, through the afternoon and evening 180. And we're back down to 150.
Um, part of that is because it's been interacting with the, the land there, the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, it will start to move away from that and interact with some uh, well above normal sea surface temperatures, We're talking about upper 80s, and that's way above normal. And that's the energy that these storms use to develop and grow. And so there's a lot of fuel for that storm to keep on developing as it heads toward Florida. Uh, again, winds at 150, that puts it at uh, a strong Cat 4. Cat 5 is 157, um, and it's moving at about 9 miles per hour. So it will start to pull away from the Yucatan Peninsula, definitely doing some damage there. We saw some video of that just a little while ago. Cat 4, as it moves across the Gulf of Mexico, and, it, and as it gets close to Florida, it's going to be pushing a lot of water out ahead of it. Sort of like if you had water in the sink and you started to push it with your hand, that's how storm surge works. These storms push that water out ahead, and then all of that water, you know, lands on shore and does incredible damage. It may end up being Cat 3 by the time we get to late Wednesday, making landfall as Cat 3, but it's still going to feel like the kind of damage that we might see from a Cat 4 storm. Still Cat 2 in the middle of the state uh, around Orlando, and then it, it moves on out into the, to the Atlantic. Um, we do have the potential along our southern coastline out to sea and the coastal waters for there to be some tropical storm force winds. Uh, but again, the biggest thing that's going to happen with this storm most likely is the storm surge. We will have a lot of rain on top of that, but uh, 10 to 15 feet of storm surge from Tampa southward and then uh, plenty of other areas that will see anywhere from 5 to 10 feet of storm surge. Here's a look at the forecast rainfall. Again, especially there in central Florida, it's uh, likely that there'll be as much as 10 plus inches of rainfall. Um, it does decrease as you get into the northern part of Florida. For North Carolina, we're just not really seeing rain, which is great. We don't need any more rain. Um, it's going to be minimal impacts for us. It's going to be a little breezy. As a matter of fact, it's already a little bit breezy here, but Thursday is the day that we'll see the strongest winds, and it's really only, only going to be about 15 to 20, maybe 25 miles per hour. And on shore, Kitty Hawk, Wilmington, we're looking at 25 to 35 mile per hour winds. So it's just offshore. See how the color contours turn to red along our southern coast once you get offshore? That's where it's going to be, you know, 50 mile per hour wind gusts. We're not looking at any real damage on the coast of North Carolina. Right here on Thursday, we'll see 25 mile per hour gusts. Um, the wind is not necessarily going to be from just Milton, but we have a high pressure system to the north. The interaction between the two will cause some breezy conditions. Erosion, rip currents also at the coast and uh, looking at western North Carolina, it'll be breezy there like here around 20, 25 miles per hour. Checking what's happening outside across the area. Boy, it's pretty out there. It's beautiful on the patio right now. I wish we could just be happier about it. Gorgeous fall day with temperatures in the mid 70s for today and overnight it will be cool as our temperatures drop on down into the uh, low to mid 40s in uh, some parts of the area. We uh, take a look at what's to come. The coolest morning will be Friday at 47 and 68 on Thursday. After that, a little warm up for the weekend. Mega Millions is getting a mega overhaul. The change to the national game that could produce better odds and more billion dollar jackpots. And while we're on the subject, winning Powerball numbers 18, 30, 31, 52, 63. The Powerball is 22. The multiplier is two. We'll be right back. Just a few clouds, but a beautiful look over Beaufort right now. That is down southern part of our coast. We should tell you that uh, they're experiencing some uh, effects of the storm that's coming up through Florida with some of that wind pushing some of those waves in. We'll have more on that in our later newscasts for certain. We wrap things up now, though, with a look at a few of the headlines we're following for you today. Almost the entirety of Florida's west coast is under a hurricane or tropical storm warning as Milton creeps toward the state. Evacuations have been ordered for thousands, some of them making their way to North Carolina. The storm is expected to make landfall in Florida late Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. The city of Durham reached a settlement agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice over the fire department's hiring practices. The DOJ specifically alleged a test used by the department to select which applicants got interviews resulted in unintentional discrimination against African-American applicants. The city has denied violating Title IX and has agreed to several terms. North Carolina is joining 11 other states to sue TikTok and its parent company, ByteDance. The attorneys general allege TikTok designed its app to be addictive while misrepresenting its mental, emotional and physical risks to young users. Attorney General Josh Stein is asking the court to order TikTok to stop violating the law 
and to pay penalties. A mega millions overhaul means bigger jackpots, but also a bigger price. It's beginning next April. A mega millions ticket will cost $5. Lottery officials expect the increase to improve jackpot odds with more frequent cash payouts and larger pots. This is the first time ticket prices changed since the game launched over 20 years ago. Mega Millions counterpart Powerball is not expected to increase from its current $2 price. Police in Australia derailed a koala's train station adventure in Sydney. Cameras captured the animal climbing the stairs, investigating the elevator, and then walking around the platform. Police put out a warning to train conductors, warning them to slow down when passing the station due to the roaming koala. After a low speed chase through the train station by police, the koala climbed the station's fence and then jumped to the bushland on the other side. Our pet of the day comes to us from the Wake County Animal Center. Big red lover man. There he is, a sensitive hound Labrador mix. He can be a bit wary of attention from humans as he was a little nervous of other dogs during his first play group. While he didn't engage in play, he was even tempered and respectful. If you're interested in learning more about him, you can stop by the Wake County Animal Center open daily from noon until 6 p.m. Big red, mm -hmm. love his cinnamon color. The North Carolina legislature goes back into session tomorrow. Coming up this afternoon at four, we're looking at funding plans for Helene recovery. How much could be set aside for the efforts and how it would be funded. Big red lover man. I wonder how they came up with the name for that dog. <laughs> pretty cute, pretty cute yeah. though. Blue skies for us. We will certainly keep an eye on Milton all throughout the day as NBC News Daily is next on WRAL. Your next local news update is coming your way in 30 minutes. And you can get breaking news updates anytime with our WRL News app. We hope you have a great day. watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.